Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and this is yet another one of those really super fun projects, a molecule viewer in Paper Vision 3D and Flex 3D. About a year ago, I had a chemist, his name Casey Russell at Northern Kentucky University, come and say, hey Mike, can you build me a molecule viewer that runs in the browser? And I said, and I, said I sure can, give me about a year. <laughs> And here it is. And so we're going to release the base code to you so you can use it and uh, work with it on Google Code. And so let's take a look at the viewer right now. This is Benzene. And you can see you can rotate it. And if you hold down the Shift Control key, you can actually zoom out or zoom in. Whoa, a little too close there. And uh, there you have it. Uh, really simple. And uh, it's based upon mole files. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how this was developed. Um, of course, you can take a look at the demo at uh, nkuflc.org forward slash molecule, or you can download the source code. It's on my Flex 3 Cookbook 1 from Google Code. So you just go code.google.com forward slash p forward slash Flex 3 Cookbook 1 forward slash downloads forward slash list, and go ahead and just grab that. And all that source code is available. Just unzip it and load it into Flex, and it will run. Uh, just real quick here, these molecules are colored. There is a color coding. It's called CPK, Cori Pauling Colton colors. And it's the same color scheme used in Rashmal or Chime. And we can look at it real quick because it was important in building the uh, actual molecule builder. And there's the colors right there for the different uh, elements. And so I actually used this uh, color scheme in, uh, in the program. Let's take a look at the program real quick. And here we have the typical, uh, basically, uh, imports that we do uh, with Paper Vision. And you want to go back to my YouTube and watch my mini Paper Vision tutorials. And we're just going to go over the code briefly on how it was created. And that'll give you enough to get going with it if you watch those up other tutorials. And just go down a little bit, and we're going to show you that color scheme. Basically, what I did is I created a huge switch case uh, statement here. And uh, that's going to pull in the type of atom or element. And when it sees that element, it gives it a color. And for example, you have hydrogen, which is white, and you have carbon, which is gray, and you have um, nitrogen, which is light blue, and oxygen, which is red. And so all these different colors are available, and they're pulled in through the switch case automatically just uh, as the uh, data is pulled in. And when it's recognized what type of atom you're working with and where it goes, it puts the color on that atom. Isn't that pretty cool? It sure is. Now, in order to create this tutorial, we need to understand mole files. and actually fairly easy to understand. I have a mole file builder here online. We're just going to go to that real quick. It's at cccbdb.nist.gov forward slash mdlmol1.asp. So let's go to that real quick. I'll bring it up here. I have it already open. And here's our mole file builder. Now I'm going to type in benzene, or you could type in C6H6, the chemical formula. We'll give you the mole file as well. So let's submit that. And it's generated a number of files. Let's go ahead and look at the first one. And here is the mole file for benzene. And after the header, there are two very important numbers. The first one is the number of elements, and the second one, the number of bonds. And you can see there's data below that. The first is the set of positions of the elements and what element they are. And the second is how those elements are connected. For example, the first element to the second element with a bond for, and I'll explain that in a moment. But let's look at the first part of the mole file, because we actually use this first part for the uh, demo program. You can extend it with the second part of data as well, and we'll do that in future tutorials. But I just want to show you how this first part gets brought in. Here's my X position, my Y position, and my Z position of the carbon atom. The next will be my X position, my Y position, and my Z position of the next carbon atom. You see you've got six carbon atoms here and six hydrogen atoms. And just by bringing that data right into Flex, right into a paper vision 3D, it plots the molecules where they're supposed to go, and that's all I need. <laughs> really, really simple program. The next part, which we don't use in our Flex demo, but needs to be done in a further tutorial, is the uh, bond connections. And you see, there's three types, of, there's actually four types of bonds that's used here. Uh, if it's a one, that would be uh, a single bond, two would be a double bond, three would be a triple bond, and four is an aromatic bond. And since this is benzene, you see that aromatic bond here. So say uh, it says the first atom, which is carbon, is connected to the second atom, which is a carbon atom, and that's an aromatic bond. And there's another aromatic bond. And then you have a single bond, and that would be 
the first atom connected to the second, seventh atom, which would be a hydrogen, would be a single bond. So that's how that works as far as connections concerned. These are very easy to work with. Uh, mole piles are very simple. And in a future tutorial, we'd actually have to write a parser that actually brings us directly into Flex. We actually use an XML file, which <laughs> does the job. Let me show that file to you right now. So if you go to the top of the Flex program, we need to bring the data in. The way to bring data into Flex is using HTTP service command. And I talked about that in many tutorials in the past. And you can see it's referencing the folder mole files forward slash benzene pos dot xml. Let's take a look at that xml file. So I'll go over here to my methane folder. That's what I called the project. And let's look for that xml file. Let's go down a little bit. And I have a folder called mole files. And there's my Benzema uh, XML file. Click on that, and you see what I've done. I just uh, basically created a, I basically created an M molecules position tag, and that closes everything off at the bottom. Let me bring this up so you can see it. There's my closing tag, and then I have all my elements in between. And all I did is created an element tag, and then that put an X position, a Y position, a Z position, and a a type. And that's all I need to make this plot molecules and paper vision. Isn't that? Super cool. Now you don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand this program and to get it working, or a chemist. It's very simple. You just go to the atomic uh, elements chart. I just grabbed one off the web, www.webelements.com. Let's go there right now. I just needed a few properties. I actually needed the uh, atomic radii. So you can go to a chart like this on the web, and you can actually look at the uh, atom that you're looking for. And I'm looking at hydrogen right here, and we can scroll down and it gives us the atomic radii right here and it had an atomic radius of 25. I use the empirical but in second thought I might come back and use the covalent radius and I'll talk about that why I might do that in the future but once again this is just base code to get you started and it's got all the right stuff in it you'd have to take it the next step further to actually make it production ready so let's take a look at another atom we can come along here and with the drop down list just go to carbon for example And I'm going to go there. And there's carbon, and you scroll down here. You can see its atomic radius is 70. And how did I use that in the program? Let's bring the code back up. Basically, if you go down to my switch case, where I start pulling the different elements from the uh, program, you can see that uh, not only do I look at the color, but also the radius. And my radius here is 25 for hydrogen, and here's carbon, which is 70, which we saw earlier. And what I do here is I normalize everything according to hydrogen. So, so as the spheres are being plotted in uh, paper vision, here's my new sphere, I have to put a radius in there. And so I grab the radius from the XML and I normalize it with the hydrogen radius, which was 25. Very straightforward project. And then I uh, multiply it by a, a proportionality or constant for all the, all the different radii. So that's basically all you had to do as far as getting those atomic radii. You just go to that table and grab them. Let's go continue a little bit further with what we need to do. I grabbed the color schemes, of course, from Second Life. I just went there and grabbed them. And here we are looking at the type camera that I use. This is very important. And I actually use a different type camera that you don't see very much in literature. It's the Frustum uh, Camera 3D. And you can find a great blog on that. Uh, it's called Blog or Sweet 75, and I'm going to go there right now. And Sweet 75 does a great job of talking about the Frustum camera, but not only does he do that, he gives you quite a bit of code, and he shows you how to handle the mouse actions with the, uh, uh, his code. It doesn't do the molecule builder, but I was actually come in here and, and actually copied and pasted a lot of this code right into my uh, program. So thanks a lot to the guy who wrote this particular uh, um, blog portion. It was very helpful in creating this uh, uh, application. So now let's just talk about the application and how it was built. So in our next tutorial we're going to give you an overview of how this code was written. So if you look at our other tutorials this is enough to get you going. Not a line by line but it shows you how it was created. Uh, so good luck. Uh, see you next time.